This video was brought to you by the Red Hammer. Bottoms up. So if you haven't heard the news, we've got a new gaming king on the block. I mean, apparently this thing was a thousand bucks. We all know this ain't gonna be worth a thousand bucks. Imagine spending a thousand dollars for eight cores. My excuse is I gotta review it, right? Really, I just wanted the box. I'm somewhat of a collector myself. So the KS product number was first introduced with the 9900K. So I mean, back in the day, before I even started YouTube, I had a couple of 9900KSs, couple of 9900Ks. And back then, th Intel was claiming that these were better binned. Once I actually got a couple of them that actually turned out to not be a lie, but a little bit of a true stretch, if you will. What they actually did was just factory overvolt the shit out of these to make it so that they do run five gigahertz all core. Sometimes you would get a chip that would run at 1.37 volts just to make it so they all hit five gigahertz. It was not exactly what they claimed to be. Fast forward, Intel brings back the KS moniker. This time we go into it with a little bit more of a skepticism. They are claiming that these are higher silicon quality, better binned, all the same advertising as the last time. Now on launch day, Intel is asking for a $300 premium for the KS model over the regular 12900K. Now, what we're gonna do in this video, we're not gonna actually do any benchmarks today. We're gonna be doing some silicon quality and some voltage testing to see if Intel's claims of this being a higher silicon quality on average is true. Or are they pulling the same shenanigans they did with the 9900KS where this thing is just an overvolted piece of garbage that you won't be able to cool with your AIO. So, Here's what we're gonna be doing for today. I have two 12900Ks, original ones. I have my one God bin that I use, and then my wife has one that's quite above average, okay? And we have a 12900KS. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw all three CPUs into an Asus motherboard. We're gonna get the SP rating. Then we're gonna try and run Cinebench at 5.1 gigahertz and we're gonna try and find the lowest voltage that Cinebench will run three times in a row. Then with the data that we accumulate, we will be able to tell if the 12900KSs are better silicon quality, right? We're gonna see if it's worth $300 more. It's not going to be, but whatever. Maybe there's some money there. And we're gonna see if Intel is full of shit. Let's go upstairs. Okay, so here is the 12900KS. Um, I already deleted it because we have to make the comparisons fair here because the other two CPUs that we're testing today are also deleted, right? So first thing, let's throw this in the Asus motherboard and check what SP we got on this thing. So it looks like I have an SP of 100 on the P cores for my 12900KS. So now let's go into Cinebench, run it at 5.1 gigahertz and find the lowest voltage that we can that it will actually run at. Okay, we just passed three runs of Cinebench here. Let's measure the load voltage. So this was the minimum that I could get here. 1.172. So we're going to let this finish just to make sure. Yeah. All right, 5.1. Yeah, 1.172. After this, let's go check the, um, the BIOS voltage and see what the BIOS voltage is. And the BIOS voltage is set to 1.22 manual with a load line of level five. So let's go write this down here. BIOS. 1.22 LLC5. Okay, so this is my wife's 12900K SP of 96. So only four points less than the KS. So let's see what it does at 5.1 gigahertz. 
Okay, so we're on the wife's CPU now, and it took quite a bit more voltage to actually get it uh, stable, So, which is odd. So let's run it again and check the load voltage out here. Yeah, 1.217. Kind of went up a little bit there for a second. One, two, one, seven. All right, let's go record this and see what the BIOS voltage is. And the BIOS voltage here is 1.28. So yeah, maybe about, actually, what is it? Let's go write this down and find out what that actually is. All right, so BIOS, we were at 1.28. And then load, we were at 1.217. So, this is interesting. So we got, so I grabbed a calculator here and then this one is actually 0 0.045 volts more for the same frequency, so that's quite a bit right so i'm not sure if that means that this is rated differently we're gonna find out let's do the god bin and see if it's actually further away from this or if this is more closer to this. do you know what i'm saying so so we're gonna find out if the ks's are actually weighted differently based on their sp so you would say the sp 100 is of higher quality than a regular sp 100 12900k right yeah just from how close these sps are and for how much more voltage this one requires it does seem like this is weighed a bit better so like the, the ks sp is worth it's, it's more of a value the like the value of the sp is worth more if that makes any sense you know what i'm saying all right, so here is the Godbin SP, the average over here. I'm just going to try and go straight into Windows and load up the exact same overclock and then just see if it even works on Cinebench. So let's go try that first, and then we'll lower the voltage as we go and see how close these two are. Yeah, it looks like this CPU does it just fine. 1.172, exactly the same as it was before. So... Let's go and just start lowering it in small increments and see how much better it actually is. Okay, so I found the floor of this chip here. Let's run this and grab the load voltage here. It's actually not that much lower. Yeah, 1.154 load voltage. I think it was 1.2 in the BIOS here. I'm going to let this finish up. And then we're going to go into the BIOS and record that. 1.15, 1 1.154, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go into the BIOS right after this and check it out. I just want to make sure this finishes just for any naysayers. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go to the BIOS. Yeah, here we were at 1.2 override in the BIOS, and then it drooped down to um, 1.154, right? So, yeah, so it's it, for how for how high the SP is on this chip, it's not that much better than the 12900 KS at SP 100. So it looks like the KS actually is weighted more. Let's go, let's go whip out the calculator here. So we got 1.2 exactly. All right, so let me just calculate this. 1.172 minus 1.154. 1 0 point, so this is minus 0 0.018 volts. So this SP100 KS is much closer to this chip than it is this chip. So yeah, let me see if I can figure out some math here to see how much more weighted this one is over the regular ones. But 
Yeah, so it definitely means that the KS is weighted per SP, like more bang for your SP than the regular chips are. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to bother trying to math this out. This is way too complicated for me. Um, what I will say is kind of the, the rough ballpark here seems to be you can take your KSSP and add 10 to it. Does that kind of make sense? Like, it's not quite as good as a 113 here, but it's it's close. So maybe if this was kind of like a 110 SP of the regular K, it would kind of be in line with this with these voltages a bit more, right? Or maybe add like eight. That's what I would say. Take your regular KS SP, add eight, and then you got your your KSP. Now, just for fun, I thought we would do my 12700K as well, just to see how bad this thing was. This thing is actually probably the worst CPU I have ever gotten in my entire life in terms of uh, silicon quality. So we're at SP79. Let's write that down. SP79. So this is 30, 34 SP lower than my God bin here. So let's do BIOS voltage is 1.42. And I think the load, let me go check the load. Yeah, 1.368 volts on the load. So this is the silicon variance on that 10 nanometer node. You have a God bin, which will do 5.1 gigahertz at 1.154, and you have a 12700K that will do it at 1.368 volts. Hi, kitty. Hi. Hi, baby. Who's my happy baby? Who's my happy kitty? Is it time for a nap nap? Anyway, um, that is... What is that? 200? That's a 200 millivolt difference between these two. So here's the other question you have to ask yourself. If you can actually cool this down, this ran about 95 Celsius in Cinebench, right? So it was pretty hot. But in gaming, it's totally fine, right? Um, the question is, if you can cool this down, does it really matter? Right? This chip is half the price of this one, right? So maybe this one can run 5.3 gigahertz. Maybe this one's 5.2 gigahertz, right? Is the 200 megahertz difference here worth double the price? But let's go to the, let's go to the regular 12900K. This one is only gonna be 100 megahertz better than this one. Is this one worth $300 more for 100 megahertz? Do you see where I'm going with this? So like. The more you spend, the more you save. But you know, I've noticed a trend here. Even though, even though I try to show you guys that, you know, the more you go up in price, the less value you get kind of thing. My audience always, the, my audience is the type of guy that'll be like, oh yeah, look at that voltage. That'll totally justify my one, no oh God. That'll totally justify my $1,000 CPU. Right? <laughs> now, with that all being said, there is one more thing I want to mention here. When building a PC, there's more to it than just component selection. There's a balance of money spent versus the product that you're getting. Now, bear with me for a second here. Let's say you know on average that if you get a 12900KS, you might get 100 megahertz more. Now, think about it for a second. What else can you do to get 100 megahertz more? You can cool the CPU down more, right? So if you get a regular 12900K, you can get a full custom water cooling kit from Thermaltake. I'll post this little picture link thing here. You can get an entire custom loop with a copper radiator, DDC pump, and a CPU block for $240. So 
I don't, I'm, I'm not going to tell you which one is more worth it for you, but just consider that as an option, right? So like, oh, I can get an entire custom loop for 200, for that savings of that $300, right? I can also get a GPU water block down the line and just add it to the loop. That is the beauty of water cooling. So again, I'm not going to tell you which one is better for you. It's just, it was more about bringing up the point of, it's not as simple of, it's not as simple as spend $300 more, get 100 megahertz. It's like, no, no, no. You could go one step further with that. What if you get the 12700K and you cool that thing down? Now you're saving $500, right? What can you do with that $500 for the rest of your build? There's lots of options out there, guys. Don't just be like, I want CPU, I want frequency. You know what I'm saying? Unless you have the money, then go for it. But weigh your options. As a, as a PC enthusiast, weigh your options. When people actually request a build from me, that's the most fun that I actually have, is when they give me a set budget and I try in Rubik's Cube this budget to try and get the max performance. That's what it's all about, baby. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave you with that. Always remember that when buying a CPU, it is a gamble. Buying the KS does not guarantee that you're gonna get a good chip. In fact, you'll probably still get an average one. Um, all this guarantees is what is advertised by Intel. But that being said, this one does tend to be a little bit less bullshit than the 9900KS was back in the day. So this, and the main problem I have with this product is for that extra $300, it, I feel like it should guarantee you a certain level of silicon quality, right? Um, we have a few guys on the Discord that have bought a couple of these, and they got some real duds, man. So, like, it, it's still all over the place. So, like, yeah, just keep in mind, if you do get one, you have no guarantees whatsoever. You're basically, you're basically spending $300 to get a hundred megahertz on top of whatever. So if you get a crappy one that only does 5.1, you can kind of maybe squeeze in 5.2 out of it. So it, that's what you're paying for essentially. So anyway, $300, 100 megahertz. And that's it for this video. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below what your silicon prediction number is, SP if you will. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.